In this lesson, you'll learn the key specs that matter when buying an audio interface for Loopy Pro, how to pick the right audio interface for your needs, my top audio interface recommendations at different price points, and why an audio interface is essential to get the most out of Loopy Pro. So let's talk about what to look out for when you're buying an audio interface to use with Loopy Pro. And let's start with the question, why do I even need an audio interface in the first place? Sure, you could use the microphone that is built into your iPhone or iPad, but this is extremely limiting. The sound quality is poor and you won't have the option to plug in guitars, outboard equipment, microphones, that kind of thing. So without an audio interface you're not really getting the most out of this amazing app. To decide what you need start by asking yourself how many instruments you plan to record at the same time as this will directly affect the input count that you're going to need. For example, if you're only going to record guitar then you simply need a very small audio interface. But if you need several microphones, several instruments at the same time, or you plan to use this for a small or large band, then you're gonna need a much higher input count. The same goes for outputs. If it's just you jamming and practicing, then one set of outputs for your headphones can be absolutely fine. But if you plan to work live, then you're more than likely gonna need two sets of stereo outputs. One to go to some in-ear monitors and some headphones, the other to go to front of house for the sound engineer to mix or for you to mix if you don't have a sound engineer. Try and think about future-proofing your audio interface a little bit. Whilst one set of inputs and one set of outputs could be absolutely fine for now, if you do think that you're gonna go a little bit further with Loopy Pro, then having a few inputs and a few outputs really does make a difference and allow you to expand and not have to sell and buy a new audio interface too soon. Now, once you've worked out how many inputs and outputs you are going to need, a really important thing to look out for is if the audio interface is what's called class compliant, which basically means that it will plug straight into your iPhone or iPad and work without any drivers. This isn't available on all audio interfaces, so do make sure that it is class compliant. Other useful features are USB bus power, so that it can be powered directly from the iPad, and MIDI in and out, if you feel like you're likely to need those. I use MIDI in and out to talk to some guitar foot pedals, and also sometimes my devices, like my drum pad, uses a MIDI five pin cable, so I need that to get into my iPad somehow, and that goes through the MIDI port on my audio interface. So if you need that, then make sure to look out for it. One of the most important specs that I always look out for on an audio interface is the latency figures. The less latency, the better, meaning the delay between when you play your guitar or sing and you're hearing it back in your headphones. Some of the higher end audio interfaces have much better latency figures. However, be aware of one thing. These figures are based on the audio interface working with a Mac or a computer. When you're using class compliant mode into an iPhone or iPad, these figures may not be 100% accurate. They're pretty close as far as I've seen, but you may have slightly higher latency when using it in class compliant mode, i.e. with an iPhone or iPad. However, as a general rule, you still want to be trying to get the smallest amount of latency you possibly can when buying an audio interface. Now let's talk about some of my recommendations. Well, if you already have an audio interface of any kind at home, then there's no harm in giving it a go. Plug it in, see if it works, see if it gives you everything you need. A lot of people have got old audio interfaces that aren't particularly fancy, but they will do the job just fine for live looping. So if you've got one, then give it a go. After that, I'd start with a budget-friendly option, and then you can expand as you go. But let's make sure that that budget option has at least a few inputs and a few outputs, allowing you a bit of flexibility even just having two inputs so you can have two different types of instrument plugged in without having to swap is really useful. For live work, aim for at least two sets of outputs so that you can have a separate mix for your headphones or in-ear monitors and a separate mix going to the front of house. When it comes to inputs, well, only you can decide that. You know the instruments that you plan to use and that will directly affect your decision here. It's always good to choose a well-known brand when buying an audio interface, mainly because you will then continue to receive support and firmware updates down the road. There are a lot of off-brand audio interfaces that seem really good value, but I wouldn't trust them for longer than a few years. You might get lucky, but you just don't know. But the good news is there are some really affordable options right now. Now here are a few picks that I would recommend for Loopy Pro at different price points. They're all class compliant, meaning they will work with an iOS device. And I'll make this table downloadable so that you can have a little look after this video. The budget price point, you've got the Behringer UMC22 and the M Audio M Track Solo. These are excellent entry level interfaces. They're simple, budget friendly, and they work straight out of the box. 
If you want something slightly better, slightly better preamps and a bit better reputation, then you've got the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. These come in a range of different input and output configurations or the Motu M2. These strike a good balance between good preamps, low latency while still being iOS compatible. And then if you want to spend a bit more and get some really stellar audio quality, you've got brands such as RME. I personally use the Babyface Pro FS and this sounds phenomenal, but I did buy this in a recording studio sense, not for live looping. So I'm not sure I would definitely buy this again, although it's been fantastic for me and I really do like it. The Apogee Duet 3, Apogee, Apogee, not sure how you pronounce it. And they offer a lot of premium options as well. They've got top tier sound, advanced routing, and they're ideal for live performance or studio use. But honestly, there are so many options out there, I can't possibly cover them all. Even gear with built-in audio interfaces are a great option. Things like the HX Stomp, or people have got those Zoom recorders. They often have an audio interface or a USB possibility along with them so you could get away with using some stuff that you've already got lying around at home in the end it's often a trial and error process to find what works best for you and your setup so wrapping this up if you've got any kind of audio interface lying around at home give it a try first it might be everything you need and you can save a little bit of money but if you expect to need more inputs and outputs and want some room to expand start exploring your options now it's great to check the loopy pro forums and other social networks for people using loopy pro and audio interfaces that way you know that these have been tried and tested and can come with a good helpful recommendation.